Hey, Bun. So today I want to talk about the cash shop in Final Fantasy XIV, whether it is predatory, aggressive, whether it is pay to win, whether it gives any unfair advantages, because this is one of the first questions that a lot of new players ask me when they're thinking about even buying the game. This is an important topic that I think that as gamers, especially now, in just the modern gaming culture, we need to be vigilant about and we need to be sort of objective about to make sure that cash shops don't get out of control and upset game fairness, creating some sort of monetary incentive for there to be better rewards that you can pay for with real money versus what you can actually get in the game. So I'm going to cover all of that here today. And first I want to address the uh, pay to win <laughs> notion because some people see are just like frothing at the mouth to label anything pay to win like because it's like a big checkmate if they can find some kind of logical gymnastics to make a case for something being pay to win i heard one person say malvasy 14 has a sub and a cash shop it's one of the most pay to win mmos around that's not what pay to win means that's not what any of this means Unless uh, you see to the point that glamour is the end game, in which case, I mean, yeah, in that case, I guess it would be pay to win. I saw someone say uh, that expansions are pay to win because you pay money and you get a higher level cap, you get access to all of the new gear. Clearly, someone who paid for an expansion is going to have a more powerful character than someone who didn't, which is just, it's so pointlessly reductive that it's it's really one of these perfect examples of someone just weaseling their way around the definition so they can be like oh got him pay to win these are silly arguments but i only uh point them out to illustrate the fact that some people are very excited to call something pay to win so just for the sake of clarity I would say pay to win means that you pay real world money and in exchange you get character power. You get actually more powerful on your character. Real talk though, what does the cash shop offer? It offers more inventory space in the form of retainers. You get two for free. Each one has a storage capacity of 175 items and they each can sell I think up to 20 items at a time. So if you want more than the two free retainers that you get, then you will need to pay an extra $2 per retainer per month forever. So this would mean that, yes, you could get more gill. You could have a more income of gill, assuming you're selling stuff that people actually want to buy. <laughs> so what can you do with this gill? Can you then exchange this gill for, uh, you know, real power gains on your character? I think that for the purposes of this discussion, it is only relevant when you can buy at a max level at max level for rating scenarios, I think is what most people hold as that golden standard of character power. Currently, I think the best sets that you can buy with Gil, and it's always been this way, uh, they're never going to be as good as Tombstone gear, which you get from playing the game. They're never going to be as good as rating gear, which you get from playing the game and being good at the game. So no not at all there's not even a loophole here where you could use gill to get some very very powerful in-game rating sets like the best you can get is a rating set that is gonna get you just barely ready to get into the introductory savage fights for this tier and by the way all of that is assuming that you bought the extra retainers you got all the extra inventory space and through your own work and effort you were able to translate that into real gill making for yourself like that's still work <laughs> that you had to put in like that's still you playing the game and having to uh, put in some effort to actually get all the gill that you would need so in the case of 14 more inventory space from the cash shop uh, more gill and gill to buy okay introductory beginner level rating sense okay comparing that to other cash shops like we look at elder scrolls online where you can use real money to buy crowns which is the cash shop premium currency and then you can sell those crowns for in-game gold you can then use that gold to buy extremely good pvp sets like that will make you quite strong at max level in pvp and in terms of rating no you cannot buy abyss pve set last time i checked but you can buy very good ones like very very good rating sets that'll make you quite strong 
It is a loophole where you are able to use your real money to exchange it for in-game currency and then use that currency to buy uh, some power gains for your character, like significant power gains. No, gear does not equal skill. So you might buy all that and then still be crap at it and not be doing very well at all because you don't know how to play. But I still think that um, that's kind of irrelevant to the issue at hand, which is can you exchange real money for power gains? It's something that we need to be aware of. We need to be thinking critically about. In the case of World of Warcraft, at least as early as February, so quite recently, you can buy game time tokens, sell them for gold, and then buy bind on equip best in slot items with the best in slot corruptions on them from the auction house, which I was really flabbergasted to find out that they allowed that to happen at all. The fact that even Sumbus was purchasable on the auction house was wild, considering that you can now get gold with real money through the token system. And I'm sorry to see it. Uh, I, I, I sometimes fear the day that they might ever consider adding uh, the ability to buy like game time tokens in 14 that you could sell for Gil. Like I, I don't see that happening. And even if it were the case, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's pay to win. But it what my point is that it opens up this pathway. It opens up the possibility. In the case of Elder Scrolls Online, their cash shop also sells XP scrolls, mount speed, carrying capacity, stamina upgrades, um, which some people will describe as pay to progress faster, not necessarily pay to win. And I actually found a pretty good comment on this subject that highlights the reason that I'm talking about this. They said, a game with pay to progress faster is more likely to design around making you want to pay for that, which means the base design of the game gets influenced with caps and limitations that it wouldn't normally have if it didn't sell progress convenient stuff. It ends up creating a problem to sell you the solution. And that is what we have to be vigilant about. I do not believe that that is happening in 14, but we can't ever forget that that possibility is there if there are any kind of pay to progress systems in a cash shop. But I would say that in the case of 14, we're very fortunate to have a development team that seems to be aware of that as well and doesn't want to go down that slope in this game. And I think that the fact that they are currently working on the upgrades, the uh, polishing up of Realm Reborn content proves that they are not creating a problem to sell you the solution. Uh, because in the case of the Realm Reborn slog, it would be in their financial interest to not make those changes, I suppose, and then just incentivize you to buy the uh, the story skip, to buy the um, level skip. But they're not doing that. Instead, they're adding Realm Reborn flying. They're adding, uh, they're deleting a bunch of quests. They're massively improving the amount of XP that you get. They wouldn't be doing that if they were just trying to sell you the boosts in the cash shop. We have boosts, yes, but they don't boost you all the way up to 80. Another thing is the inventory space. They would not be adding, you know, 200 extra slots to the glamour dresser, adding a 70 slot Chocobo saddle bag if they were trying to incentivize you to buy more retainers. I also want to talk a bit about predatory marketing tactics that I've experienced in other MMOs and that thankfully I do not experience in 14. In Elder Scrolls Online, they have uh, one of their favorite which I think is a predatory marketing tactic, is the deadline timer sales. So they'll have like a new and exclusive and special and unique mount that's only available to purchase for like a very high price. And they'll only sell it for 12 hours and then it'll be gone, like maybe never to return. But you'll log into the game and that's the first thing that you see whenever you log in. You get a pop-up. And it's got a timer ticking down on it. And it's like, buy now, act fast to get this mount in the next 12 hours. And this is when you're already paying, even if you're already paying for a sub for that game, you will get this pop-up very aggressively marketing that you better act now, act fast. And uh, this is a psychologically manipulative tactic. And I hate to see it in that game. Some people will uh, feel the psychological pressure to, to impulse buy when they feel like they maybe shouldn't. Like it's better to at least have the sale if you're gonna have a timer, let it last for like 30 days, you know? Like let it last for people to get their next paycheck. 
Oh, and also about Elder Scrolls Online, they have loot boxes. We are fortunate to not have a loot boxes in this game. The, the thing is, just like with gambling, you know, people think they have a chance at getting good stuff in the crates. This is not, I don't want to turn this into a video about Elder Scrolls Online. I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying that. Um, these are things that are happening in other MMOs right now. Even if the stuff will never come to 14, let us count our blessings now. <laughs> let us count our blessings. We don't have loot boxes. Damn. I'm so mad about that. I think Iso gets the crown. <laughs> Pun intended for aggressive marketing that's horrible. I also think that the general player satisfaction with the game influences quite a lot how willing everyone is to accept the cash shop. In the case of WoW, like if you look at the en Enchanted Fade Dragon video announcement, it was pretty well received. 2014, the Hearthsteed announced another mount, which doesn't even look that good, that was very well received by the community 2014. Uh, WoW was more loved at that time. Then uh, starting in about 2015, when everyone started to be extremely pissed off about the state of the game, Pretty much uh, after World Lords of Draenor and things started to really go downhill. And ever since, new mount announcements on their channel have been met with a lot of hate. And I'm not saying that this is representative of the player base, like clearly this could be a, um, a vocal minority. But the fact is that people get extremely pissed off every time a new store mount is, is out. And I think more pissed off than they were before they were as dissatisfied as they are today with the game and more pissed off than I've ever seen anyone be in the 14 community. Like when the fat cat was released, everybody celebrated that. Like everyone talked about how cute it was and how fantastic it was. Nobody was, uh, like if there were people crying about it, it was a small percentage of people. Like everyone is fine with it because we feel like we're treated fairly in other ways. Meanwhile, in WoW, I saw someone say, anytime I see someone riding around on a store mount, it makes me hate them because they help ruin this game. See what I mean? Like, <laughs> the player base feels like the game is already ruined or getting ruined. Um, then they are very unhappy with even being asked to pay for additional stuff that they feel like when they're, when they feel like they're not even getting their money's worth for what they're paying already. And I think that's a really important point to keep in mind when we think about the cash shop and how willing we are to engage with it. If you feel like you're getting more than your money's worth out of your subscription, which I certainly do, like you've seen my video about uh, how I play every single day, like I get it, I definitely get my money's worth out of this game. Then I feel like, well, uh, I'm happy to support this game. I'm happy to support the development team. I'm happy to support the creation of the next expansion. It doesn't bother me. I know that the cost of a subscription has not really changed since MMOs first came out. It's 15 bucks a month, I think, uh, in 14, you can pay less if you have just one character, but the cost of sub has been pretty stable and the cost of a game itself has remained pretty stable at about $60 and development costs have risen. The cost to pay people has risen, but those other costs have stayed the same. So a lot of people have made the argument that, well, they're just trying to, with the cash shop, make up for that lost revenue. And I think Final Fantasy XIV, especially when you look at it, comparing it to other MMOs, uh, I think it handles that in an extremely fair way. You cannot boost your character to max level. You cannot buy any any currency that'll give you a loophole to getting the best gear or even extremely good end game gear and on top of that they're going out of their way to improve your inventory space improve the game uh, low level experience so you won't have to feel like you need to buy a skip uh, to get past realm reborn or, or whatever so i think that we're fortunate and we need to count our blessings but at the same time be vigilant think about what does a cash shop mean? What are some of the dangers that come with it? What are, what are some of the possibilities and uh, monetary incentives that are opened up just ha from the existence of a cash shop, whether or not those things are actually acted on, which, again, I will say, <laughs> uh, thank the 12 that they're not, it seems, at least so far. In terms of my concerns about the current cash shop, probably the biggest one that I have is the account-wide stuff. I really think that this is a step in the wrong direction because I think that all mounts and minions should be account-wide by default. I don't think that um, 
they should charge extra because a minion is account wide. Like if you look at the TIF amount, I mean TIF amount, TIF amount. <laughs> oh lord, um, TIF minion, cloud minion, and Aerith minions. Oh, those are account wide minions, so they cost like a fair bit more than regular minions. And I think that's kind of BS. I also think that the mounts that are costing more just because they're account wide. This seems like a really silly and not great reason to charge extra. Could this be an example of a time when they're selling you a solution to a problem they created? I would say, yeah, I think so. That's why I don't like that. That's my biggest gripe. But again, you know, these are mountain minions. They are not needed at all. They're completely optional. Um, but it's just something that kind of rubs me the wrong way. And that's probably my biggest concern, though, honestly, comparatively. Looking at the problems that I have with other cash shops, I feel like it's really, really minor. And also considering that alt are not a big deal in 14, you know, that, that kind of minimizes this issue, too. Most people just have their main characters. There's not a lot of reasons to have alts. So mm. then again, if you just most if most people just play one character then doesn't that make charging extra for account wide even more frivolous anyway i would really love to hear your thoughts on this as you can tell this is an incredibly uh hot button issue for a lot of people and the danger that a cash shop can pose is a real one it's something that we need to not ever completely push out of our minds do you wish that the cash shop would never sell any completely unique mounts or do you feel like it is well balanced out with a number of unique mounts that are able to be gotten in the game do you just not care about that at all and they, they're free to add as many unique mounts as they want because you don't care about mounts it's all cosmetic anyway uh, is glamour the end game for you and you feel like under that win condition, it absolutely is pay to win. Uh, I would love to hear all of your thoughts and comments on this very deep and broad subject. Thank y'all so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please consider supporting the channel on Patreon or on Twitch. You can also support this channel for free by clicking the subscribe button or by sharing this video with your fellow warriors of darkness. Thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.